Hi, hi, hello. Okay, Basie, so let's let's get to it. So the uh, the check-in, of course, asks us to find things out about a basis, show that there's basis for the plane, and asks what linear combination of basis elements um, uh, make that particular plane vector. So um, so three minus two, and so I'm going to find the c1 and the c2 that make three minus two. And then the this third question is the same thing, only with a different vector space and a different set. Okay, so let's have a whack here. So let's see. It says uh, show that uh, show that the the basis show that this the sequence one 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 minus one is a basis. So so the very first thing to do, of course, is to worry about linear independence. So c1 times 1, 1, c2 times 1 minus 1 makes 0, 0. All very routine. We've done this a lot, so we're, we're getting good at this now. Um, c1 plus c2 equals 0, and c1 minus c2 equals 0. Um, a person can notice that if you add the two, then the c2s cancel, and, but I'm just going to do them all just the same way, just, just, just to have a pattern for how I do them. So, whoops, let me get this light. There we go. So, uh, let's see, we're looking at uh, minus row 1, minus row 1 plus row 2, and I get C1 plus C2 equals 0, and then what, minus 2 C2 equals 0, and of course that's in echelon form, so it has a unique solution. C1 equals C2 equals 0, so we're looking at linear independent, linearly independent set. Next up is to worry about a span. So I ask, if you give me an x, y, can I find a c1 and c2? If you give me an x, y, can I find a c1 and a c2? All right, so again, it leads to a linear system. In fact, it leads to pretty much the same, same problem. c2 equals x, and then c1 minus c2 equals y, minus row 1 plus row 2, and you get c1 plus c2 equals x, and then minus 2c2 equals, what is it, minus x plus y? Well, right away, I get from that that c2 is, what, uh, 1 half x minus 1 half y. And then uh, c1 plus 1 half x minus 1 half y is equal to x. And when you when you solve that, you get that uh, what c1 is c1 is x minus one half, so one half x, and then bring it plus one half y. So if you give me an x y, I can find the appropriate c1 and c2, and so we're, we've we've got spans. Okay. 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 Part B asks about the vector three. Uh, sorry, question two asks about the vector three minus two. So C1 times 1, 1, plus C2 times 1, minus 1, get an idea, there's a theme here, <laughs> equals 3 minus 2. And I could do Gauss's method and get an answer, and, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But I've got, right up here, I've got how to calculate C2 and how to calculate C1 from the X and Y, so I'm, I'm going to use it. So let's see, uh, what am I looking at here? C1 is uh, C1 is 1 half times the 3 plus 1 half times the minus 2. So that's 3 halves minus 2 halves, so that's 1 half. And C2 is, uh, it's, it's minus. So 1 half times the 3 minus 1 half times the minus 2. So 3 halves plus 2 halves, so that's 5 halves. Okay, so we can uh, so we can we can get any vector at all in the plane as a combination of those two, and in particular, I just kind of picked the generic vector and illustrated what happens. You can get three minus two. Right, and then to answer the answer the second part, I'm going to need a new piece of paper. I'm practically out, so let's see how it go. It says uh, two minus x three plus two x. Show that's a basis, and then it says uh, what a combination gives um, minus one minus x. And so uh, once I show it to basis, of course, I, I put in diamond bracket. So let's see, let, let's give it a whack. Um, we're looking at uh, to show linear independence for question number three. To show linear independence, I take c1 times the first, 2 minus x plus c2 times the second, 
3 plus 2x, and I'm going to write down here 0. It's perfectly correct to write just equals 0. That's perfectly fine. But I've noticed in the course of teaching this, over, over, over years of teaching this, that just writing 0 the first couple times, just writing it down these polynomials, sometimes gives a person a little bit of a weight. How come you have polynomials on the left and number on the right? So I'm going to explicitly write it as the 0 the zero polynomial. I won't do this for the whole course, but just the first couple times and try to make it perfectly clear. No, no, polynomials on the left, polynomials on the right. Okay, so this leads to a linear system. I'll take the constant terms. 2c1 plus 3c2 equals 0. And then minus c1 plus 2c2 equals 0. And off I go with Gauss's method. So 1 half row 1 plus row 2. And I get 2c1 plus 3c2. 0, of course, just copying that down, and then this is 7 halves, 7 halves C2 equals 0, and, and I'm looking at echelon form here, so I get linear independence. Linear independence. Okay, so next up is to, uh, next up is to worry about span. So I'm going to take an arbitrary linear polynomial, something like uh, A plus BX, and, and try to express it as a combination. So C1 times the first, plus C2 times the second, equals A plus BX. And, uh, you know, here we go. Uh, I'm going to do, a, um, a, I'm gonna do uh, the, the linear system, 2C1 two, two plus 3C2. 2C1 two plus 3C2 equals A. And then uh, minus C1 plus 2c2 equals b, 1 half row 1 plus row 2, same, same stuff, I'm really doing a lot of repeat uh, repeat job, but trying to do one thing at a time, instead of being over smart about it, um, so just, just to kind of make it clear before I worry about taking in shortcuts, 2c1 plus 3c2, 2c1 plus 3c2 equals a, and then uh, 7 halves, 7 halves, C2 equals 1 half A plus B. Okay, and now comes the hard part. I messed this up about three times before I finally got it right. So let's see, the C2 here is not so bad because you multiply both sides of the equation by two sevenths. Can you, can you detect a spot that came control? Multiply both sides of the equation by two sevenths and you end up with C2 equals 1 seventh A uh, plus 2 sevenths B. And now it gets ugly. 2c1, 2c1 plus 3 times 1 seventh a plus 2 seventh b equals, uh, equals a, equals a. Uh, I spent a long time writing down 1 half a plus b there, but then 1 half a plus b isn't right. I just simply wrote it wrong and it ended up, ended up in a terrible swamp. So uh, 2c1 plus 3 sevenths a plus 6 sevenths b equals a. And so finally, you end up with the right answer. C1 is a, what the 2 sevenths a uh, take away 3, three sevenths b. Okay, when I carry it over to the other side and divide by 2. Okay, now uh, the second half of this problem, the second half of this question is to... Uh, for the second half of two, I can't remember, is to worry about uh, minus one minus x. Express minus one minus x as a linear combination of these two. Linear combination of members of what we are now showing as a basis. So uh, as with the previous problem, uh, I could I could put minus one minus x up there and to go through the Gauss's method and get an answer that, that, that perfectly uh, perfectly fine, but I have the C2 and the C1 here, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna use it. So I get uh, C2 is what uh, C, C2 is uh, one seventh times minus one plus two seventh times minus one. So minus three sevenths, and uh, C2 here. No, that was C2. That's what I wrote. C2. I did that right. 
C1 equals, for this problem gave me, now, now, it's, now it's in my head. So this, so C1 is, uh, C1 is 2 sevenths times minus 1. Uh, take away 3 sevenths times minus 1. So, uh, so you, you take away, and that, that involves uh, minus and minus makes plus. And when the smoke clears, you get 1 seventh. Okay, so uh, so what what the what the check-in refers to here is that we can um, we can express members of the space as a linear combination of vectors from uh, from from what we've shown here are the bases, and so um, and so in this in today's section we're worried about the fact that um, that there is in fact a unique way talked about this at the end last time, that when we found the 3 minus 2, when we found the minus 1 minus x, when we found, for example, the minus 1 minus x, there was a way, and furthermore, the way was unique. If you give me a and b, I find not just one c, not just a single c2, but, but not, not many c2, but in fact only a single c2. So there is a unique way to express each uh, each member of the space as a combination of basis vectors, and that we're going to use that today. And um, uh, so let's let's bring that up. Okay. Okay. So uh, so the theorem that we saw at the end last time is that in any vector space, a subset is a basis if and only if each vector in the space can be expressed as a linear combination of elements of the subset in one and only one way. One way is not surprising because it's a spanning set, so of course everybody's expressible. That's the point of spanning. But only one way, that, that's, the, that's the thing in this theorem that makes a point, that you can't express it in two ways or three ways or infinitely many ways. Only one way. So if you say to me, what are the coefficients? You're not asking an ambiguous question. It can't be the case that I, I get one set of coefficients and the, my friend next to me gets a different set. That, that's not right. Instead, if you say to me, what are the coefficients? There's a unique answer. Okay, and uh, 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 here's an example. So here's a vector and a basis for the for for the vector space R three. So uh, one one one, one one zero, one zero zero is a basis for R three. I won't bother to check that, but but it's not hard to check. And I'm going to express one two three as a combination of those three. So you write one two three as a combination, and that gives you Gauss's. Excuse me, gives you a linear system. Gauss's method gives you that c one is three, c two is minus one, and c three is also minus one. Okay, it doesn't give you that c one is like uh, you know four plus three times. Uh, there's only one solution. Okay, so the so. When you write down that solution in an organized way, our habit will be when we write down that solution in an organized way is to write the coefficients in a vertical vector, column vector. And so we, the terminology is that in a vector space with basis B, the representation of the vector with respect to the basis is the column vector of coefficients that you use to express V. So you write those coefficients down vertically in a vector. Represent, representation of V with respect to B. Really, both V and B are, are variables here, but for the kinds of problems that we'll typically do, especially at the beginning, we'll hold B constant and maybe vary V. So we're writing this as a function of V, where B is a parameter. B is, B is kind of uh, fixed for the length of this problem. This B subscript here is that uh, we, uh, we sometimes find it convenient to write the b, but we also sometimes can find it convenient to omit the b when we're always using the same b through the length of a problem. We won't keep writing it over and over again. All right, and then the, the c's, the things in this vertical vector, are the, the, those are the coordinates of v with respect to b. Coordinates of v with respect to b. And, of course, on the prior slide, I calculated the 3, the minus 1, and the minus 1. So those are the coordinates of V with respect to V. And we've done a lot of these now, and really they're not much of an extension over regular Gauss's method on linear systems. So I don't need to do hundreds of examples, but it's an important idea, so I want to do a couple. So here's a basis for the linear polynomials, 1 plus x, 1 minus x. I got a formula here to express 
given A and B, how do, you, what, how do you find C1, how to calculate C1? Given A and B, how do you calculate C2? And if you gave me 3 plus 4x, I could find that uh, the coefficients are 7 halves and minus a half. So you write those coefficients down. This is our organized way of writing down this information right here. You write those coefficients down, 7 halves and minus 1 half. B is fixed for the conversation. In principle, this line here says that we could change the A and the B, although I'm only going to look at 1 because I can't be bothered looking at 20. And 3 plus 4x, 7 halves and minus 1 half is the outcome. Is the, is the outcome. I just want to make an observation about uh, representations with respect to the standard basis in R3. So if I take a vector, and I just made up some crazy vector here, in, and represent it with respect to the standard basis, remember the regular basis from calculus, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, what they call calculus i, j, k. Then the representation is how much... What's the coefficient of 1, 0, 0? What's the coefficient of 0, 1, 0? What's the coefficient of 0, 0, 1? Well, you need a 2 in front of 1, 1, 0. You need a minus 3 in front of 0, 1, 0. And you need a 1 half in front of 0, 0, 1. And uh, obviously a person notices that this and this are the same, of course. How could you not notice? So in general, that is, the representation with respect to the standard basis of a vector in, R, in Rn is the vector. So a vector represents itself with respect to the standard basis, and, and it's often convenient. Okay. The definition uses the word represents. So I want to describe what we mean by represents, and this lemma is the key. So uh, the, the, what the lemma tells you is that a relationship holds among a set of vectors relationship holds among a set of vectors, a linear relationship holds among a set of vectors, if and only if that relationship holds uh, among the representatives of those vectors. Represent, uh, uh, relationship holds among a set of vectors if and only if that relationship holds among the representatives. So they represent these vectors perfectly because we're only interested in linear combinations. So uh, rather than go through the proof, proof of course is in the book, but rather than go through the proof, which has kind of a lot of I's and J's, I'm just going to do an example. I picked a basis and I picked some members of, of the plane that have some linear relationship among them. 2 times the first minus 3 times the second minus the third gives you 0. When you do the calculation for the representation of V1 with respect to the basis, the representation of V2 with respect to the basis, and the representation of V3 with respect to the basis, again, it took me a couple minutes to get the arithmetic right, but I'm pretty sure that's right. And a person can easily check that just like I had a 2, a minus 3, and a minus 1, so too here, a 2, a minus 3, and a minus 1 gives you 0. Okay. So these, uh, these representatives, these representations, these representations perfectly express what's going on with the vectors in the sense that we're interested in this with the vectors, and it matches perfectly well there. Okay. Okay, very good. So uh, for next time, of course, we're going to be talking about dimension, and um, and and we'll, we'll see you see you for that. Okay, bye bye.